Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy and in today's tutorial I am drawing a hummingbird and I really hope that you enjoy this tutorial today. So the first thing I like to do when I'm doing a drawing is to start with the eye area and the reason why I like to do this is because often the eyes are the main focal point of a drawing and they are personally the first thing that I look at. Also another reason why I'm starting with the eye area is so that I can block in my darkest areas and then work my way around the eyes and on the rest of the bird. Now I chose a hummingbird for this drawing because I thought this would be a real challenge for me. Hummingbirds are so beautiful, they have stunning colours, they are very vibrant but also they have a lot of texture to their feathers as well. So I'm not going to lie but I did find this quite tricky to do and one of the things that I found the most difficult was definitely trying to get the feathers really realistic. So for the top of the hummingbird's head I found the feathers easier to draw as they were quite similar to drawing the fur of maybe a cat or a dog but I Underneath the crest of the bird I found these feathers particularly hard to draw so these feathers almost look like fish scales or shells so it was quite hard for me to get an accurate sketch of them and what I really had to do was really study the reference photo of the bird. So a few tips I have for drawing feathers is to really analyse your reference photo and to be honest I definitely could have done with spending a little bit more time really looking at the reference photo and breaking it down so that I understood how to accurately draw the feathers. Another tip I have for drawing feathers is similar to advice I would give if you were drawing fur and that would be to really look at the type of feathers you are drawing. So what I mean by that is what sort of length are they? What sort of patterns do the feathers make? Are they clustered together? That sort of thing because that will help you to break it down and make it easier to study your reference photo. One last tip I have if you are drawing feathers is to really look at your reference photo up close to study all of the little details on the bird because if you can get the little details in your drawing then that will really help you to get an accurate sketch and realistic sketch as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit more now about some of the coloured pencils that I am using because this is actually one of the most important aspects of drawing with coloured pencils. If you aren't using colours close to your reference photo then your drawing will look unnatural and unrealistic so that means that you aren't going to be creating a sketch of what you are drawing that's true to your reference photo. So what I would suggest if you struggle with picking colours for drawings is to print off a reference photo and hold up some coloured pencils against the different areas of the photo to see how well the colours match. And you might not have an exact match but just try and get colours that are close to the original photograph and use those to create your drawings. So that is something that I like to do myself and I will also pick out all of the colours I want to use for a drawing and have them ready before I start so that way I don't have to keep rummaging through my pencil collection just to find colours that I need. Another point I just wanted to make, and this really goes for any drawing you are doing, is to make sure that you sharpen your pencils to a sharp point before you start your drawing, as this will help you to get in all of those little fine details that you need, especially for animal drawings like the hummingbird. And I really like to use the Superpoint Manual Sharpener by Derwent to sharpen my pencils. So in terms of colours that I'm using for this drawing, I'm mainly using a lot of blues and greens because hummingbirds have a lot of blue and green tones to them. But in total, I used around 20 pencils for this drawing because there's also a lot of undertones such as grey tones in the birds as well. So for example, on the bird's face, I used a lot of brown tones in the eye and a lot of black in the pupil and then I used a lot of dark blues and greens on the head of the bird but on the crest of the bird there were some lighter blue tones and also some purple tones too. So that's why it's really important to study a reference photo properly because you'll often find so many colours, shades and tones even in just one area. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is the brands of coloured pencils that you can use for creating drawings like this, so wildlife drawings or drawings of animals. And the pencils I'm using are the Karen Darch Luminance pencils which are a wax based pencil and these pencils are my go to pencils for several reasons but as they are very expensive you could also use Prismacolor Premier pencils and I've also heard good reviews about the Arteza coloured pencils as well. 
Now the one thing to bear in mind about using wax based pencils is that they have a very soft lead and actually in hindsight I can see that the luminance pencils because they are so soft did cause me some problems for adding in really fine details like some details on the feathers. So if you want to get a lot of fine details in your drawing then I would recommend the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils which are oil based pencils. So they also have a fairly soft lead but they are slightly harder than the wax based pencils so they can get more detail in. So I've actually started to use these pencils a bit more for animal drawings just to get the amount of texture and detail in the animal drawings. But really any of those brands of pencils will get you some really lovely results in your drawings and I'll leave a link to all of the pencil brands down below. So going back to my drawing now and I have to say I found this part one of the trickiest parts of the bird because of how the feathers were spread out and also because there was a real mix between lots of blue and green tones and lots of grey tones too. So for this part of the drawing I'm actually going from a really rich and intense bluey green tones to quite dark grey tones at the tip of the feathers and I had to keep looking back and forth at the reference photo just to make sure I was getting the colours accurate. So again I would definitely say that it's really important to keep looking back on your reference photo for guidance and I would say to keep reflecting on your reference photo at least every 5 to 8 seconds especially in areas that you are unsure of. So although I found this part especially tricky, I'm really glad that I drew this bird because it was a challenge and I'm definitely trying to draw more complicated pieces now because I think that will help me gain a lot more experience. So if you are doing a full drawing of an animal, try something different and do something a little bit out of your comfort zone and don't be afraid to take it on as a challenge because if things don't go quite right then you just don't take it personally and just grow and develop from it. So there were some areas that I really wasn't happy with and I think that was partly because of all of the different textures in the bird but also because this is the first time I've actually drawn a hummingbird so this was completely out of my comfort zone. So now that the camera has zoomed out quite a lot it's actually really interesting to see how the drawing looks as a whole and what I've already done and by this point I'd actually worked on the drawing for about 8 hours. So that is something else that I just wanted to talk about briefly in this tutorial because I think it's really important to mention to anyone using coloured pencils. Coloured pencils are a really slow medium to work in and although this is only a 10 minute video, what you are seeing is a process of 12 hours of work. So coloured pencils are an incredibly slow medium to work in because you are using a tiny piece of lead to cover a massive surface and animal drawings in particular take so much time to do because of how much detail you are adding into the drawing. So what I would say to you if you are wanting to get into drawing with coloured pencils is to really appreciate how much time goes into a drawing. So take your time on a drawing and definitely do drawings like this in stages over a few days so that way you can keep coming back to your drawing with fresh eyes, you can have a break and you can really produce work to the best of your ability. So I know some of you are probably wondering why I'm mentioning that in a tutorial video but that really is a key part of my teachings. It's not just about the end result, it's also about how you go about producing the work and so many people rush through and spoil their drawings. Also another thing I just wanted to mention is that if you feel that you've gone wrong in one specific area then don't just stop drawing and throw the drawing away because you can still get value from it. So you were still able to learn a lot from drawings that didn't go well or areas that let you down. So for example, the one area that I wasn't happy with this drawing was the branch and the bird's feet. But that doesn't mean my drawing is bad overall. There are things that I did well. So for example, I'm actually quite happy with the bird's face as I think it's very detailed and also the colours I've used as well. So being able to pick out your strengths and weaknesses in a piece will really help you in the long run and that is one of the most effective ways that you can improve your work and create high quality coloured pencil drawings. And if you are someone who struggles with this then what I would suggest you do is try and pick out three things you like about your drawing and three things you think could be improved. 
So I'm actually just coming towards the end of this drawing now and as a lasting note for this tutorial I just wanted to quickly talk about the importance of being able to make adjustments at the end of your work. So it's really easy to just finish a drawing and then forget all about it but the one thing I like to do maybe even a few days later is just to make some final tweaks and adjustments to my drawing and that really can make it pop and add even more details. So definitely give yourself some time at the end of your drawing to to look back on it and make some adjustments if you need to. But anyway guys that is it for today's tutorial and as always I really hope you enjoyed this one and found it useful and of course don't forget that I have a full list of all the materials and products I use for this drawing down below as well as the links to my other social media accounts. Don't forget that I will be back very soon with a brand new video so I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you never miss an update from me. I upload art related videos three times a week and I have a list of all of the materials, products and equipment that I use in the description box down below. But anyway, I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye everyone!